For this demonstration, I'm going to be using 20 millimeter black enamel conduit. Not forgetting that there is also 25 and also galvanized. But for this moment, we're going to just be using 20 millimeters. The first objective is to cut straight, a tricky task which takes practice. First things first, if we remove the stop from the vise and place into its holder, place the conduit into the vise like so and fix into place. If I allow myself to cut a length of conduit at 300 millimetres long, so from the end of the actual conduit we're going to mark the conduit at 300. Some people have difficulty cutting the conduit to the actual angle that the conduit is pointing at. For the one item, you have to adjust it so this angle here is 90 degrees. If you do have difficulty with that, a suggestion, very much like the SWA, is we could wrap a piece of electrical tape around the conduit, like so, to enable us to cut a straight edge. Like so. Place the blade along the mark. I recommend holding the saw like so with your finger running down the edge of the actual blade. This gives it a little bit of control. The other hand eventually will rest in this position against the hacksaw to help you manoeuvre the hacksaw backwards and forwards. But for the time being, we need to mark the actual saw. We need to cut a groove into the conduit to keep the saw in the right place. I use usually my thumb, just rub it against the markers. So the blade rubs against the tip of the thumb. To enable you to hold the actual conduit and stop in the whole machine from moving, you can always put your foot onto the machine. As tempting as it is, try not to snap it off at this point. It leaves a nasty burr on the outside. It doesn't look very good, not very professional. Continue cutting it with the hacksaw. Like so. Now, we've cut the conduit down. We need to put a thread on the end of it so we can attach it to another piece of conduit or another box, maybe an accessory, for example. So, moving the conduit from the vise, I will replace the conduit into the vise like so. What you have to take care of is when you tighten this up, that it's not too loose so the conduit can move in the vise, but at the same time, you don't tighten it up so much that you actually squash the conduit and leave a dent in it. There, perfect. Again, let's introduce ourselves in more detail to the actual stock and die. As we have on a stocks and die, we have the blue section in the middle, this is the stock. There are a handle on either side of it. The stock holds the die in the middle of it. And to allow us to put a thread onto the actual conduit and make sure it's square, we have a guide to allow us to put it on square. And that's what we're going to be using now. Placing it on to the device like so. Now, there are a number of ways of doing this. My preferred method is not to put the lubricant on just yet. My view is that if you wanted to get, a, get, get some grip, you wouldn't put oil on the road in your car from the moment you start. You would try and get some grip first. You're only going to put on a thread, that is all. You remove then the die and use some lubricant to allow us to look after the actual die cool the conduit and allow the threads to go on it properly, like so. Placing one foot in front of the actual vise, place both hands on this. Now you want equal pressure on both sides at the same time. To start the thread, I start with little sudden jerks. 
This allows the die to bite into the actual material. Once it starts doing that, you will find that it will start going on properly. Take this back off again, give it a little tap. Then you need to apply the lubricant. Paint it on, like so. Place the die back over, trying to leave the lubricant and not allow the die guide to push it all up. Push it back on. One, two, three. Turn it back a few times. It allows the swarf and any little pieces of metal which have been ripped off by the die to leave the actual die. Rotate it back on. Three again, rotate it back. As you can see while I'm doing this, you can see the swarf falling out of the die as I'm going. You can at any time take the actual stock and dies off of the conduit to help clear out. Just tap it against the edge of the vise. This allows the swarf to come out. This allows you to keep an eye on the actual thread, make sure you haven't got any broken threads on there. It also allows you to add more lubricant, if you so wish. The amount of thread that you need is actually approximately for 20 millimeter pipe, 16 millimeters. Easy way to verify that on these is that the first line on the nuts which actually hold the die and the guide in place in the stock is actually at that point. So when the conduit is protruding up to that mark, then you know you've got approximately 16 millimetres. When you have marked at 16 millimetres, remove the stocks and again, just clean it out a little bit. Then using a reamer, or again, a round file, deburr the inside of the conduit, just by placing the reamer into the conduit like so, and rotating it. This removes all the sharp edges from the conduit. Obviously, to do a nice job and to remove the grease, use a piece of rag. And clean the pipe off like so. The reason that we use 16 millimetres is because the actual coupler for 20 millimetres is 32 millimetres long from the top to the bottom. And ideally, if I was to join this onto another pipe, I want the conduit to butt up so the two pieces of conduit actually touch each other in the middle. You place the coupler over the thread, all the way up, and then you need to tighten it on by being a pair of grips. Place them on and tighten them up like so. Make sure you can't untighten it, then you know it's mechanically sound. 